But God could be funny At a cocktail party while listening to a good girl theme joke Or when the crazy say uh, welcome back, Doug Padger Radio. It's the afternoon, 1.34. Oh, yeah. Man, this beautiful, beautiful weekend here in the Twin Cities. Uh, you know, yesterday it was 68 degrees here in the Twin uh, Cities. Yes. And, and I just happened to look at the weather forecast. Mm-hmm. You know what the average high in Minnesota is on the, uh, on the 7th of May? No, what is it? 67. Well, there you go. We act like we've been given the greatest <laughs> gift, and it was simply average. Right. It has been such a long, hard six months around here yeah. that just taking average acts <clears throat> like it's the greatest day. Yeah, we just... Like, every day on the 7th of May, it's supposed to be just like that. Yeah. But we have an ongoing conversation around here about religion and spirituality, and it comes through uh, a number of voices. And sometimes this lands on a holiday, like today. And so we were talking in the first hour that John had not yet, because of a very busy schedule, had a chance to connect with his mother yeah. to wish her a happy Mother's Day. So we said, well, let's give her a call. Okay. Okay, so, all right, Brandon, call my yes. mama. All right, I will. Rand, he's, he's calling now. Now, here's the question for your mom: Is your mom the kind who will answer <coughs> a random phone number from Minnesota? I think she would. You, you, th- you think she'll just pick it up with a uh, with hello? D- and then let me ask you this: Does your mom know that you have anything to do with this radio program? She does not know, and she's a lonely old lady, so I think she'll pick up the phone no matter what the like. Number she is. doesn't know that you're going that that, that you're on the radio uh, once I, a week. I don't think so. In, in your in your your daily check ins with her, just to see how she's doing in her inner aged um, experience, you, guys. you don't Tell bring it up. Happens. No. Well, well, we're, this is just full of radio excitement. Yes. Right, right now. I mean, this is like we're we'll doing our own version. Of prank phone call. <laughs> I hope she lays into you for not calling her often enough. Maybe she might. <laughs> it's quite possible that she's not even home. She might yeah. be off. She might be off doing things. Yeah. That, that's- out to dinner after church. Your or call has been forwarded to an automatic voice okay. message. Okay, you know, leave a message for yeah. one eight five five zero eight four four six. Is not available. The tone. Please record your message. When you have finished By the recording, way, you may hang up or cripes, press one for more know options. How to leave a voice message. <laughs> hey, mom. This is your son. Uh, give me a call back um, at nine five two nine four six six two zero five. Give me a call back at 952-946-6205. Call me now. I mean, like right now. It's not an emergency or anything, Mom, but just give me a call, okay? You need to call in the next six minutes, Mom. Call me in the next six minutes, Mom. (laughs) Goodbye, John's mom. Well, I hope that works out for you. Oh, that was great radio. Well, here's, here's what I don't know. What mom's not sitting around the phone waiting for her kids to call? How many children does she have? One. There we go. Hey, you know, one of the questions that, that comes up on Mother's Day is how is one supposed to think about a child? Yeah. Right? Because it's the whole nature of mothering is that there's a child in this thing. That got me thinking religiously about how we should think about children. And that events of this last week that have captivated so many people's minds here in the United States, at least, at least around the, the killing of Osama bin Laden, made me think, should religious people who profess what, the, what we profess around this station here, that God's not against you, that God's not your enemy... That in the Christian narrative, Jesus doesn't save you from God. That rather, Jesus saves you from destroying yourself and destroying one another. That God is on your side all the time. That God is not your enemy. You're not God's enemy. You're called to be partners with and engaged with whatever God is up to in the world. Should that then provoke us and call us to think of Osama bin Laden as a child of God as well? I think for some people, that's a difficult thing for them to get their heads around. That they might say, well, yes, he was a human being, but would someone be comfortable saying that whatever care God would have for you, God has equally for everyone, regardless of what they do? These are tough theological questions. Now, to some people, they're not tough at all. To some people, they're like, no, I've got the answer to that, and the answer is yes. And then other people are like, no, I don't, it's not tough for me either. The answer is no. <laughs> and then there's others of us who say, oh, it just kind of makes me feel funny to say it like that. I don't know that I agree or disagree. I just don't know that I have the way of thinking that would allow me to say it like that. So I think on this Mother's Day, it is good to recognize, and I know it's a little bit simplistic. It's a little, it's a little cheesy. It's a little sort of uh, Hallmark card-like to suggest that Everyone is someone's child, that everyone comes from a rich history, that everyone comes from a life of complexity. And that, as my friend Jay puts it, that what sometimes our Christian tradition requires us to do is to say to God, 
practice what you preach, that if we're supposed to love our enemies, if we're supposed to bless those who persecute us, if we're supposed to forgive those who have wronged us, then wouldn't God also be doing the same thing? And so these events of this week, the, the bringing down of a, of a mastermind terrorist and a week later, the recognition of Mother's Day creates a confluence of theological consideration that for some people, they don't want their Sunday afternoon on Mother's Day worried and ruined by this kind of conversation. And for others, they would say, no, that's really bringing into focus a consideration of what do I mean as a religious person who wants to proclaim that God is not against us, that rather God is for us. And so I think that it's an interesting um, uh, conversation for us to have. Now, what complicates it in Christian theology, and every once in a while here on the program, I like to take you into a little deep theological background, a little deep theological teaching, is that in some Christian traditions, and equally in some Jewish traditions, there is a message communicated that a human being requires some kind of an upgrade before they could be on the side of God. That a human being starts out in a deficit position as an enemy of God's or as someone in conflict with God or someone who is predisposed to being on the other side. So there's theology that is taught that says that human beings come into the world in a deficit position position. They owe something right off the bat just by being born. In the Christian tradition, that's often referred to as a thing called original sin. That you're born with a kind of effect of sinfulness that's right there from the start. You don't even do anything. Just your sheer existence puts you in a deficit position when it comes to God. That you are in the hole already. You already owe something from the very start. Now, I would call that a minority view within the Christian tradition. I don't think that's how the Bible describes people's engagement with God. I don't think that's how all of broad Christianity describes it. But it certainly is a popular one inside of Protestantism in the United States. And it certainly is a powerful one in the world that um, is dominated by Lutheranism and Catholicism and Calvinism. It's a world in which um, those are assumptions that people start with. And I think that the only way around that is, to, provi- is to, to provide another view. And that is that all human beings are created as partners of God. And I think that that's the, the gospel proclamation. I think the story to be proclaimed, I think it's the one that Jesus proclaimed, I think it's the one that Moses proclaimed, I think it's the one that I want to be proclaiming and, and invite you to proclaim as well, is a story that says that a human being is, at the start, a partner of God. And then we live our lives through societal influences, through our own personalities, through our religious experiences, being more or less engaged in that project, being partners with God. And so when you think about Mother's Day and children and should Osama bin Laden or should John Music or should Doug Badgett or know. should any of the rest of these people, I just couldn't put my name right up against it. <laughs> I, just, I just needed to have a little break in there. I thought you'd be a good buffer. Thank you. <laughs> Should we consider all of us to be predisposed to start up not requiring an upgrade, not requiring a software improvement? See, there are some people who think that a human being is born into the world like how you would open up a new computer that you purchase at the store. And when you get home, immediately it says to you, this computer is out of date. You should do something to fix it. There's some problem in it right off the bat, and you need to connect it to the Internet and get it all fixed. So different churches have suggested different means by which that fixing can happen. Some places it's belief. For some places it's baptism. For some places it's communion. For some places it's baptism and then communion and then belief. And some do it in different orders. So many different religious traditions try to provide an answer to the dilemma of, well, if people require an upgrade, how does one get that upgrade? Now, I would suggest that's really not what the Jesus narrative, that's not what the Bible is trying to communicate, but here's where you get into funny waters. The folks that are proclaiming that May 21st will be the end of the world, as we know it, they're saying, we get all of those answers because we've read the Bible correctly. And then someone like me comes along and says, this whole idea of original sin, this whole idea that people are born into the world in a deficit and they need to have an upgrade, Mm -hmm. that doesn't come out of the Bible. You can meet another guy down the street, and if you don't know somebody who has this other view, a bunch of my friends hold the other view. I can introduce you to them. (laughs) They would say, no, I'm reading the Bible correctly. The problem is anybody on the radio, on the Internet, is sitting in your living room who says to you, oh, well, 
you know, this is just what the Bible says, mm-hmm. has to say that in concert with all the other people who have a different conclusion about what the Bible says. So you don't get very far. And it can be terribly frustrating to people because they're like, well, which is it? Does it say it or doesn't it say it? Now, I have concluded, no, the Bible doesn't say that stuff at all. Mm. <laughs> it says that you were born as one created in the image of God, as a partner with God, who's going to join together with God, and no upgrade is required for that. In fact, it probably works the other way, that people start out as partners with God, and then things tend to go awry. And so then we try to regain that which was originally there, as opposed to you start in a deficit, and then people just kind of make you better as life goes on. It doesn't seem to work so much that way. So I think that this Mother's Day is actually raising this entire question about how should we think about children and how do we think about people? And see, it's e- the, one of the reasons I think this is a big deal is because it's really easy to hate someone if you think God hates them as well. Yes. And if you can think that that person hates God by default is an enemy of God, it's really easy to not think highly of the enemy of God. <clears throat> Sure. Oh, yeah. So I think that it really it has it has not only sort of mental category implications. I think it has real life how you treat one another kinds of implications. It's because I get to exclude them because God excludes them. Yes. So I don't know how you want to think about your mother today. Can't tell you that because everybody has complex relationships with their moms. Literally everyone, right? It's a complex relationship. The person for, uh, in whose body you were you were developing as a as as a as a preborn, Ew. and then the person who cares for you, and the person who didn't care for you, or did this or didn't do that. All these kinds of things that co- that come into play. But I can suggest to you that every person you see, I think, is born into the world as a child of God. And that's every person you see in the mirror, and that's the person you see through your car window. I think every person is born as a child of God. And if we honor and respect that and don't have these other categories of those who are really in versus those who really aren't in, I think we would end up with a different world. Now, here's what's quirky about that. Most of the world's population has not held that perspective simultaneously. What's up with that? (laughs) It's, It's kind of funny. After all these years, most people would still say, no, we are more special than those people. Someday, it may not be that way. Mm. And a friend is going to be joining us here for the right on here after the break. Rachel Held Evans has put together a little project to try to encourage people into this, and it's going to be our right on. Rachel Held Evans is getting our right on because she is trying to raise this conversation in a way that says, maybe we could think about other people as being different but not necessarily being the enemy of anything. Problem is, there's not a lot of money in that. There's not a lot of motivation in that. There's not a lot of, uh, yeah. there's not a lot of get up and go against the other guy. It's not very popular. When that's your idea. But we're going to talk about that when we come back here on Doug Badger Radio, broadcasting live out of the Twin Cities on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota, and over at DougPagetRadio.com. And on Facebook, you can find us over there, too. Any of those places, let us know. We'll be back with Rachel Held Evans right after this.